What do you think? Pretty blue color? Yeah. I like it too. Are you even going to drive it now? Yeah. I'm going to drive it home, park it in the garage, and never drive it ever again. Here it goes, guys. options that I got on the car is the orange seat belts that I did decide to pay extra for even though in the past I said I would not pay extra for things like seat belts on this car though I'd add that because this adds a little more character to the car and plus I do plan on doing a few other little mods to kind of just make the, the theme a little different I like the idea of blue on the outside orange on the inside and with orange accents on the blue I think it's a good combination so now let's try to take this thing out on the road Six right here. Red line's lower right now, of course. So I also got for those of you that want to whine about it, it is the 1LT package. So I've got the black speakers. Don't have the heated seats or anything, but this car is still amazing. All right, let's put it to drive. You know what? Let's start out by to go to my mode. Let's edit this. Let's see. I don't know if you guys can hear. Let me put this down. Just change the tone of the exhaust here for the drive home. Because they're tour sport tracks. So it tracks now all the way over. So now I'll put suspension there and braking there. Alright, so there's my mode set up. Alright, so let's put it in the drive and let's roll. So I probably picked the worst day to take delivery of this car. It is rainy and misty and disgusting, but I did not want to wait another week to get the car. So I'm out in the traffic. Stingray, they charge you, I think, $500 or $495, something like that for a, the, 
engine cover. It's a plastic engine cover for 500 bucks, which I think is kind of ridiculous, actually, because you can spray paint one at home for 20 bucks worth of material. But that is the actual intake manifold is bright red. So uh, it's super cool. $595 is a no-brainer on an option like that. This car just sounds amazing. It does not sound like your typical Chevy or domestic V8 muscle car.
put those cars aside when it comes to me owning those cars, right? I, 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 it's, it's different, right? This car though, this is my car. You know, this is my car that I bought with my money that I earned, that I own on the title. My name's the only one on the title and I took delivery of. And this is a hundred plus thousand dollar, 670 horsepower, relatively rare, hard to get car. This is awesome. And it means a lot to me to continue the legacy of my dad of having cool cars and, and, and loving the car enthusiast lifestyle. And now to me, like I, I feel a little more accomplished that I've been able to achieve being able to afford and purchase a car like this myself. And it's 100% me paying for it and uh, on the title and it's it's different. So that's why, you know, on the YouTube channel, I talk more about Corvettes. I mean, I live and breathe Corvettes more, more than any other car. Um, of course, I'm a Ford GT guy and I love Fords, right? I, I love Mustangs, actually. I used to have a Mustang. I, I love those. So I'm not a, you know, a Chevy over Ford type of person by any means, but the Corvette is just such a meaningful car to me. I wanted one since I was a kid. My 20s, I bought a C6. That was an awesome adventure. I flew out to Atlanta to drive it home to Texas. Uh, kept that thing for 11 years before I traded it in on the 2021 C8. And then traded the 2021 in, 2022. And then traded the 2022 in now for this 2023 Z06. Uh, it's just an incredible journey of these great cars and so to me like I, I feel like I've I've sort of you know personally made it in this supercar world myself and if anyone wants to say that oh it's just a Chevy and it's just a Corvette and whatever I, like there were people telling my dad that the Ford GT was just a Ford um, and there's still people that of course couldn't imagine paying hundreds of thousands of dollars for for a Ford um, or even now some of the new GT is going secondhand on the market for over a million. They could never say, oh, it's just, it's just a Ford and I would never pay a million dollars. I didn't get that, right? Um, and this is just a Chevy, right? It just happens to be a really expensive one. But to me, it's just, it's just like a pinch me moment for me, right? Like I don't, I'm not someone who really felt entitled that I had to drive fancy, expensive cars my whole life. This, this actually means a lot to me. now back at home a couple days later and the car is now cleaned up and I can really show it off and tell you exactly how I spec it, what I got and everything like that. But man, I'm loving this car. Got about 150 miles on it so far. Um, such a huge difference between this car and the Stingray. I know a lot of people that maybe haven't driven each one are going to think uh, that it might look the same or they might feel the same or technically it's the same car. It's very, very different. If you look at a lot of people who make comments online that have driven both cars or owned both cars, they'll say the same thing. It's a very, very different driving experience. It's not just the sound, not just the more power, uh, but the way the car looks, feels, drives, handles, the suspension, um, and really the way the transmission and the sound of the, of the exhaust kind of work together makes it such an amazing experience. It's really, really cool. But let's go over the car and see some of the options that I got. These are the satin graphite wheels. Now, this is a $500 option, a killer, killer deal of an option. You got an option of this, or you could get black. I got these, because this technically is really a, uh, a black, but it's like a flat satin color black. The gloss black wheels are also dark like this, but they're gloss black. So uh, these kind of have a, a way of still showing off the detail of the wheel, while still from a distance giving that contrast between the car body color and the wheel, and I really, really like the way that looks. So the color of the car is rapid blue, which is also another $500 option. 
I think it's really awesome. I really wanted to get a color that was a little more exotic than the car I had before because this color just screams something that kind of stands out. And, and with the orange accents on the seats and the dark wheels, it really kind of has more of an exotic feel to it. Another option that I got here on the car was the carbon flash mirrors and the carbon flash spoiler. So that's just a metallic black color. I got those because I think it really fits better with the body lines of the car. From a distance, it really shows off how the black uh, window section and then all the way to the B pillar are all going to be the same color. Otherwise, I really feel like the body color mirrors really, uh, they, they just don't really fit from the profile view of the car. And so I think it looks really good like that. So now I'm going to show you the inside of the car. And this is where the next option that I have that I selected is located. And it's kind of a different option. Not too many people are getting the different colored seat belts. I chose to get an orange seat belt on this car. Um, I think that it really pops. It's gonna look a little interesting here on my red shirt, may not show off as well, but I think it really pops against the otherwise black interior and the blue color of the car. You can kind of see a little bit of contrast there between the blue and the orange in a view like this. Um, it, it kind of looks not much different than the, the Gulf Heritage colors that we have on the Ford GTs, but that really wasn't what I was going for. Surprisingly, I'm not trying to mimic the Gulf Heritage in this car. I really actually am trying to mimic um, the light blue McLarens with the orange accents on the inside. To me, I think this color matches those colors better than the Gulf Heritage color, so I'm really trying to match that. I plan on also doing some other uh, accents here on the interior of the car. Uh, I'm really going to plan on dyeing the stitching throughout the interior orange as well uh, because it comes, if you get the, the black interior, it actually comes with light gray stitching and it's very easy to dye. So it's a very easy modification. I plan on doing that pretty soon. So then we would have the orange seat belt with the orange stitching and the blue car. I think it's going to look absolutely killer. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm probably the only person out there right now that has a 1LZ Z06 in rapid blue with the orange seat belts right now. I guarantee you if I put orange stitching, I'll have a one of one car. I know that a lot of people think their car is one of one, but it's just a different version. I don't think anyone out else out there though will have a rapid blue car with an orange seat belt and orange stitched leather interior. I think it's going to be uh, a very unique car but look really really cool. So the last option that I got I'm going to actually take you guys back outside the car here and pop the trunk slash engine cover. We're going to go back here. Now this option I think was the best money I spent and I have a car on so you can kind of hear it now but it is intake manifolds. Uh, this was a $595 option. Probably the best dollar for dollar option I have on this car. This is not a cover, okay? This is the actual intake manifold. And you can see my car, my engine was built by Robert Pies. It just makes this engine look really, really cool. And when you close the trunk, you can still see it right there. It still is red. It looks really, really awesome. So let's go back on the inside. With the 1LZ on the Z06, you still get the heads-up display so that you don't have to pay for the upgrade. And you still get the mag right. It comes included. So those things come included even with the 1LZ options. So let's go over what still comes with the 1LZ. So you still get a Bose sound system. It's the base Bose sound system, but uh, I'll tell you, I haven't listened to anything more than maybe a couple of podcasts. Uh, because the sound of the car is awesome. I always have the windows down. So I don't really care that much about the upgraded sound system. I do wish I had the navigation in the PDR. You can upgrade that individually. I didn't necessarily feel it was useful uh, for me because I'm probably not going to take the car to the track very often, if ever. Uh, but it is a cool option. You can add it independently to the 1LZ. You don't have to get the 2LZ in order to get that option. With the 1LZ though, you do have full Apple CarPlay and Google CarPlay wireless. You have navigation built in here. So you really don't need the navigation system at all, in my opinion. So with the PDR and the nav option, you're really just buying the PDR. That's the big thing. You get the, the camera in the front, you get the recording option. But you still get all these great options. You get the leather steering wheel, you get all the options for the sound system, you get the drive mode selection. Now these right here are the base seats. They come with the 1LZ standard. They're the GT1 seats with the Mulan leather. I think these are great. Some people might think that you just need a better quality leather with it. If you upgrade to the 2LZs and the 3LZs, you get a slightly higher quality leather material, but the 
GT1 seats like you're seeing here come standard, even with the 2LZ. So a lot of people, you couldn't even really tell the difference between the different seats when you're just looking at them. Uh, maybe if you sit in them, might be a little bit different material and they do have the, the uh, inflatable bolsters and stuff like that. But to me, this seat is fantastic. It works great. I don't need any upgraded seats. I think it's great. Now, the biggest thing you're really missing with the 1LZ is this camera mirror. I don't know how well you guys can see, but the visibility out the back window is not the best and the visibility in the corners is not necessarily the best. And if you've driven any other mid-engine car, you're probably gonna be noticing that, that the way the angles work on the side mirrors, it's not good. The way you have to look through the rear view glass and look through both this window and the window in the back just narrows that scope of vision. So it is normal. You get used to it. You just have to know the different parameters of the car. So cool little Easter egg in this car because it is a 2023, it's the 70th anniversary. You get a nice 70th badge right there on the center speaker cover. And if you come around here, you get right here, 70th anniversary Corvette, 1953 to 1923. So that's another really cool thing that comes along with any of the 2023. So no, this is not a 2023 70th anniversary edition car. Um, like some people see that on their car and they think it's a 70th anniversary edition. It's not, it's just a 2023. Um, so the 70th anniversary editions are special. So as I go around the car, I've had the car on the whole time. The majority of the time it's been in a weather mode, which is the quietest mode. I wanted to make sure that the engine was running and warming up while I'm making this video, but at the same time, not drown it out with a louder exhaust. This car is super loud from the factory without an exhaust system. So I'm gonna show you real quick what the difference is in sound between the different modes. And I'll give it a tiny little bit of rev so you can see what it is. Of course, I'm still well under the break-in period. I only have 100 and, oh, actually only 20, 129 miles now. So I have still quite a bit of time before I get to open up those revs all the way. But I can give you a little bit baby rev just so you can kind of hear the different sound. have it that's the new car I absolutely love this car uh, it's it's a completely different experience again than what I drove on the stingray uh, absolutely worth the money to me I mean it's it's a lot of money it's a lot more than the stingray but um, if you can afford it and if the question is whether it's different or whether it's better it is absolutely different and better that absolutely is I'll drive you back down the road here with the car in track mode Again, just at low RPMs and you can really hear the difference in the car. Let's just be getting to 32 or so miles per hour and the RPMs not even barely going over 2500 RPM. Uh, it just sounds like such an awesome car. Man, I can't wait to get this thing to 500 so I can really open up the exhaust and really floor it and really see what it sounds like get up to seven eight thousand rpm it's gonna be awesome anyway guys i really appreciate you guys joining me in this journey i mean it's been nearly three years since i decided i wanted to get a z06 three years um and here we are finally i have the car i love the car it's been worth the wait um and man I, i'm gonna enjoy the journey so there's a few different modifications that i want to do to the car soon but i'm not going to do anything crazy to it really my biggest things are orange stitching i might do orange calipers um and i don't know i want to do an exhaust system but at the same time i don't know if it's necessary so we'll see but uh, until the next video guys adios